Good afternoon, everybody, and you're very welcome along to another cook along with me, Anya Boyle, from Good Food Nutrition. So I hope you're all having a fantastic Monday. The weather is absolutely stunning, so hopefully you've managed to get outside and get a bit of sunshine. So today, uh, midweek, um, I thought I would do something a little bit, um, a little bit different. So sort of indulge your little sweet cravings and make you some healthy sweet treats. So today I'm going to be making my delicious oatie and cinnamon flapjacks. Really, really nice. No butter in them, no sugar in them, but believe me, they taste absolutely brilliant. And I'll run through how we're going to do those now in a second. And then after that, while they're cooking in the oven, I'm going to be showing you how to make some really delicious um, uh, dark chocolate nut clusters. Okay, so lots of lovely ingredients in there with some really sumptuous dark chocolate as well. So again, I'm going to get started now because the flapjacks take about 20 minutes to cook. And then um, once they're in the oven, I'll be making the nut clusters and then I'll run through and give you lots of ideas as well on making sort of um, substitutes for different ingredients there that you are, maybe you don't have in your cupboard. So we'll get going on the flapjacks. One of my favorite here, my kids absolutely love them and they are brilliant little snacks as well to have on the go in the car, in your handbag. Or even when, when all of this is over, when you're back to work as well, just to have in your, um, your desk, in your office as well. Really, really great snack. So we're going to start off, we have 270 grams of our um, jumbo oats in there. I have three to four bananas. Okay, so we just have them chopped down like that. Again, the riper the bananas, the better, because obviously the riper they are, the sweeter they are as well. The bananas are what's going to be giving this recipe all that lovely sweetness. We're going to be going in with um, about one tablespoon of coconut oil or, show you there, or olive oil, okay? So we're just going to start to melt this off. So we have one table, one tablespoon of our coconut oil into our little pot. We are going to go in with two big tablespoons of our peanut butter. So again, just measure them in there. Now, the peanut butter I use is, a, it's a no sugar one. So I tend to use the whole earth one or also the meridian one as well is quite nice as well. Again, just watch out for the sugar content in your normal peanut butters. It is massively high. It's probably why kids love it so much. So again, those ones there are lovely. I think another one, pep and nut as well, gorgeous. But the whole earth, you can't go wrong with it. So we've got two tablespoons of that. And we're just gonna pop on the heat to a low heat there. And we're also going to go in with maple syrup or honey. And we're going to go in with one tablespoon of that as well, okay? If you, uh, if you fancy it, you can do without the maple syrup. There's nothing to say it has to be in there. But again, just to give it that little bit of sweetness, we're going to go in with that as well. So again, in your pan, just to recap there, is your peanut butter, your coconut oil, and a little bit of your maple syrup. And we're just very, very gently stirring that around just to melt it all down. And all we want is for it to become liquid again, okay? So this is gonna be our binder, really to bind the flapjacks together. So really, really delicious. Let all of that melt there. And I'll show you that now in one second. I'll just let that keep melting there. Into our oats, we're going to go with some cinnamon. Okay, so just your normal ground cinnamon. And we're going to go in with about a teaspoon of that. So again, just get your little measuring spoon. The cinnamon in them is delicious as well. In there with that. And I'm just going to show you now, this is all melted here. You turn off the heat, literally 30 seconds does you. So you can see in there, if I just show you the consistency, it is just dropping consistency. Give it a stir around there. And you'll see, as I just tried to show you, it is just pouring consistency. Okay, so that is gonna be your binding liquid. And we're just gonna let that sit for a second. So in here are oats and our cinnamon, okay? We're also gonna make these slightly healthier than normal by going in with some lovely pumpkin seeds. So again, that bag is 175. So you probably maybe want about half of that bag. Now I'm a bit shefty in that I don't measure everything. So I tend to go in with a few handfuls of things. So I would say it's probably about maybe 70 grams. 
So that's 70 grams of your pumpkin seeds, or you can go in with your sunflower seeds as well. You can go in with any sort of little seeds that you want as well. Nuts in here are gorgeous as well. What I want to do is I'll mix these up and then I'll give you lots of ideas for other little substitutes you can put in as well. So we're also going to go in with our um, sort of mill down or our ground down flaxseed, okay? And your flaxseed, such a healthy little ingredient to have in the kitchen. It's full of your omega fats as well, which are your healthy anti-inflammatory fats. Brilliant for your skin, brilliant for your nervous system, brilliant for your brain as well. So they're, they're a great little addition to have in the kitchen, particularly if you have children as well. Really, really nourishes the brain as well. So we're going to go in with about two tablespoons of these. That's all we need of those. And again, that one there is just a mixture of um, flaxseed, hemp seed, and chia seed. And it's already milled down, or you can buy it unmilled as well and just mill it down yourself. So we're going to give that a good mix around, just with our little spatula just to make sure that that cinnamon is all the way mixed through it. So that is just smelling gorgeous. So the cinnamon, don't just think the cinnamon is only there for Christmas time as well. If I use it throughout the year in porridge, in flapjacks, even in my banana bread and everything I make, it is just delicious. But such a warming sort of um, scent off the spice, really, really lovely in the kitchen. So that's great. Just given that, you can see there, it's just given that a really good mix around. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to mash down. As I say, we have our bananas here. I've got three large bananas. Sometimes I'll go in with a fourth one as well, and I may do today because I find that the bananas give it um, great moisture. Okay, so you've no butter in these ones. So I'll just move that out of the way so you can see. You've no butter or, uh, to make moisture in these ones. So what you're doing is the moisture is coming from the bananas and it's also from the melted, the melted um, coconut oil, um, peanut butter, and your little bit of maple syrup as well. Okay, so that you need to sort of bring the moisture from somewhere if you're not having butter in them as well. So again, is they're going to be um, really sort of, you know, your good healthy fats in there as well with your omega, with your milk flaxseed as well. So again, that is really, really important. Now, the, obviously when I said like really ripe bananas as well, it's gonna work a lot better. They're actually a lot easier to mash as well. But again, they have a lot more sweetness in them as well. But these ones are okay. I think at this stage is you just take what you can get because you can't pick and choose in the shops. So I'm actually going to go in with another one because again, just to make them lovely and moist. Now this one here is lovely and ripe. You'll see they're very dark. And that is exactly what you were looking for. We'll just get rid of that. And we're just going to mash down that fourth one. So on the recipe, three to four bananas. I like the flapjacks uh, flap quite moist and um, chewy. But if you like a drier consistency, just go with the three bananas instead. So you can see there, not very appealing at this stage, like something you would have fed to the kids when they were small, but again, that's what we're looking for. So we'll go back here to our lovely mixture that we melted down with the oil, the maple syrup and the peanut butter. And again, just to show you the consistency that we're looking for, you can see it is really just a pouring consistency, okay? So into this, we're going to go with the bananas straight into the pan. Just mix them all in there. It's not too attractive looking now at this stage, but believe me, at the end, they're gorgeous. These only last about a day or two in my house. I don't think we're supposed to eat them that quickly, but it could be worse. They could be munching our way through biscuits as well. So we're going to give that a good little bit of elbow grease in there and give it a good mix around. That's it. And again, as I say, is that's going to be your moisture part of the flapjacks as well. And that is looking great. So you can see there. So imagine it's like when you're making a cake, is your dry ingredients is your oats, and this is your wet ingredients of your oil, your maple syrup, your peanut butter, and your bananas. Okay, so in here we have everything mixed together. Just with the hands, get it straight in there. And then we're going to go in with our wet mix. So just spoon every last bit 
out of there. Don't lose anything. And we're just going to use our spatula now for the last little bit. And that is, it's smelling gorgeous because I absolutely love peanut butter or any nut butters. You can also use a substitute of an almond butter, a cashew butter, any sort of nut butter that you want. Um, the only reason I suppose I'm using the peanut butter is that you're more likely to have it in the house. And also as well, it can be cheaper. The nut butters, I make my own, so I can make them a bit cheaper. But when you're buying them, they tend to be expensive. By all means, if you want to splash out your nut butter in here or just your peanut butter. And again, just watch that it's the no sugar added one. So we're just going to give everything a mix around here. I'll show you now. And you will see now that that's starting to come together. So you can do it with a fork, a spoon or whatever. It does require a little bit of elbow grease. And you just want to make sure that all of those oats are coated in that lovely butter mix. Now, and you'll see there is that you've got a really nice sort of moist mixture in there. Okay, so couldn't be any easier than that. It really couldn't be. So then what we're going to do is I have a tin over here. I have the oven preheated to 160 degrees fan. And what that's going to take is about 20 minutes all in there. So what I've done is you can, you can take the size of the Swiss roll tin, which is that sort of um, rec, um, the rectangular size, but that size, but that size. I can't remember what it is in measurements. Or, you know what, a little square, but whatever tin, don't get too bogged down. And if it's a smaller tin, you'll have fatter flapjacks. If it's a bigger tin, you'll have uh, thinner ones. Don't get bogged down it. This is just a silicone um, cake tin like that. And this is, I think, about 22 by 22. So I just have this on a baking sheet underneath. And again, if it's silicone, you don't have to line it. If you're using a normal tin, just line it with a little bit of greaseproof paper, and that would be grand. So in we go with our mix. Just get that all in there. And scrape every last bit now from your tin. Okay. And then using the back of your spoon is just spread that out around, around your tin. And it's really, really moist. As I say, that's what the fourth banana is there for, is the fact that it would just give it that bit more moisture as well. So you can just see, try to get as even as possible in there. And then we're going to just go in with a little palette knife. So we just have just one of our little palette knives here, but by all means, you don't have to get all shafty on it. Just go in with the back of the spoon is grand. So just smooth that down so that it's the same sort of thickness all the way around. And that means that everyone would get the same sort of size and the same thickness in their slice. So we just check that and that is lovely. So now that is going to go into our pre-prepared oven for 20 minutes. So I'm just going to pop that in and set your timer for your 20 minutes. If you're like me, you'd forget about it. So just get rid of that. Now, I'm just going to recap on that very quickly what we did there. So we had 200 and between about 250 to 280 grams. It, you, it will depend on sort of uh, how much of a wet mixture you have. So we had our oats, our jumbo oats. We had our ground cinnamon spice in there. If you really don't like cinnamon, don't put it in. It's no big deal. We melted off um, in a pan some coconut, um, uh, organic coconut oil, uh, one tablespoon of that, two tablespoons of our no sugar peanut butter. We'll just put that to the side. And then we had one tablespoon of our maple syrup or our honey. Okay. I know at the moment that raw honey is very, very popular, but please do not cook with raw honey because um, the, the sort of beneficial health properties of raw honey is in when you're eating it raw, okay? Uncooked, unheated. So don't waste your lovely raw local honey here on, in these type of things. It's, instead, just drizzle it over after you when you're eating it as well. Get much more of the health benefits. So then we, in our bowl, we had our jumbo oats, our cinnamon. We also had our lovely milled flax seeds, hemp seeds, and chia seeds in there again. Brilliant source of our omega fats and our anti-inflammatory fats as well to nourish the brain, the skin, the nervous system as well. Fantastic. 
We had our pumpkin seeds in there as well. The pumpkin seeds packed full of zinc. Zinc, absolutely essential to have a healthy and a strong immune system as well. Okay, so great. And also your omega fats in there as well, Liz. You can't go wrong. And then what we did is we mixed around the dry ingredients in the bowl, the wet ingredients in the bowl, mashed up four bananas here, or three to four bananas, into the peanut butter mix, and then mixed the two of them together into a pre-prepared tray in the oven at 160 degrees fan, 160 degrees Celsius fan oven, and that's for 20 minutes. And you'll see now when they come out how easy they are, how lovely they are as well. Now, the second thing I'm gonna to do today, um, because I thought it'd be nice if you kind of were able to make two things and then you had a choice to have them, one or the other with your coffee after the demo, or both. And if you're like me, you'll probably have both. So, I have over here, a pot full of a little bit of boiling water in there and on the top I have some really really you'll see it there very very dark chocolate now that chocolate is 90 percent okay I know that's not everybody's cup of tea at all and that's absolutely fine is I try to wean myself off the sweet sweeter chocolate so actually I really like the 90 percent now so in your pan of water, you've got a little bowl with the chocolate in it. Make sure the bottom of the bowl is not touching the where the water is in the pan. So you're going to bring the water in the pan up to boil underneath the bowl, the bowl, but not touch it. Okay, that's really important so that the chocolate melts to a lovely, silky, glossy finish as well and doesn't start to nearly curdle in there as well. If the water's hitting the bottom of the bowl, your chocolate won't melt properly and could actually go a bit lumpy. So we're just going to let that, just see if the water underneath is coming up. We're going to let that melt down, okay? And I'll show you what that's going to look like in a second. And then I'm just going to get the other ingredients here to show you what we're going to be including. So we've got a lovely array of stuff here today, really nice. That is the 90% uh, the that I use. I love the lint, but to be honest with you, green and black's chocolate is just as nice. Green and black's go up to, I think, 70% and then I think they might go 100% as well. 100% too much for me, but depends what you're looking for. But by all means, if you find the 90% is too bitter, just go to 70%, be absolutely grand. So we have, right, okay. So let's see, is it over here? The ingredients for this one, we have 100 grams of our dark chocolate. Okay, just keep your eye on under this. I'm just gonna tea towel as well, because it can get very, very hot, so just watch your hands. Okay, that's starting to boil there, and we're just going to let that melt down lovely and gently. Yep, looking good. Okay, so the ingredients for this one, we have 100 grams of our very dark chocolate for your 70%. If you really can't take even the 70%, that's hot. Try 60%, okay? But the idea is that we're making these so they're not really, really sweet, okay? So you're trying to almost um, retrain your palate on as well for that maybe slightly bitter taste on the chocolate. Now, I'm going to turn off that because the chocolate is melting even without the heat on it. Okay. Now, the ingredients on this one, we have um, 100 grams of our dark chocolate. We have 40 grams of whatever nuts you like. Now, these are not salted and roasted nuts. These are raw nuts. So they're, they're unsalted, unroasted, uncooked. They're the ones you buy like in the packs, like, you know, the walnuts, the Brazil nuts, the almonds, all those type of things. Again, because when they're uncooked, they maintain their health values. And again, your nuts are absolutely full of, again, your omega fats that we were talking about before for your brain, for your health, for your nervous system, your immune system as well. But they're also full of your vitamin E as well. So ladies, for animals getting a bit older, vitamin E gives you beautiful plump skin, okay, and keeps the wrinkles at bay. Um, I am using today, I have roasted off some of my own um, almonds and they just gently roast them for a couple of minutes so i'm going to be using those so again no flavor no salt on them and very very gently roasted your almonds as well don't forget as well as your essential fats is full of um calcium as well so your strong bones as well and strong um, strong bones strong teeth as well so you can see that everything i'm using has a really sort of um lots of different health benefits as well hence why you're putting them in and i find that sometimes if you know the health benefits of something, you're a lot more likely to think, I'll give it a try. So we're also using, I've got some gorgeous organic chopped uh, apricots. 
Okay, these, you'll notice the color on these that they are not those kind of orange ones you buy. And that is because they haven't had any of the sugars added to them or any of the other nasties to preserve them. So they're, they're um, I got these locally and um, they're just organic um, uh, sun ripened apricots, nothing else on them, okay, no sugar. So just be careful when you're using the dried fruit as well, not to end up with them really, really sweet. We've also got some flaked almonds on there as well. So you'll see there, just a couple of these, show you them in your hand, oops. They're just the lovely the flaked ones, and again, not cooked or anything. Okay, and then into here, we have four oat cakes. Sounds bizarre, but stay with me, they are lovely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blitz up the oat cakes, and I'm gonna blitz up some pecans, and I'm gonna blitz up a few almonds as well. Again, don't be too worried about it, little handfuls in there. You know yourself if you're putting too much in because the mixture will become very dry, okay? So I'm actually gonna put in a few more pecans because pecans are delicious in this. And I'd say that should probably be, we'll stick in another bit, what the hell, it's Wednesday. Now, stick them in there. I'm not gonna put in our apricots because I'm just gonna mix them through. So I have, over to the side here, I have a Nutribullet, which is just a high speed blender. And I am just gonna give them a really, really quick blitz because I want them in powder. So just bear with me for one second, it's gonna be quite noisy. <coughs> and we just give everything a shake again. <coughs> and what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna break down the um, oat cakes a bit more. I've been a bit stubborn. And then they should actually blitz down a little bit easier. But you can also put them in a little bag and then bash them with a rolling pin as well. And again, you may just have to shake the blade a couple of times. That's us nearly there. One more blitz, and that should be us. Now, if you don't have a blender in the house, don't panic. Sorry there, it's all getting very noisy. Don't panic, just chop down the nuts and bash the um, oat cakes in a bag, in a, in a little plastic sandwich bag, with a rolling pin and it's exactly the same thing. So don't get too caught up in that. Now, let's just check and see that these are nice and fine. And they are. Okay, so you've kind of got, you'll see there, you have kind of got almost breadcrumbs. And then we're just going to mix that through the chocolate. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold back a little bit of that chocolate and I'm gonna drizzle it over our lovely Make sure that's not too hot. I'm going to drizzle it over our lovely flapjacks at the end. So I'm actually just going to get rid of the boiling water that was underneath that. And I'm going to use the same pot. Because again, nobody wants about 20 pots that they have to keep um, cleaning. Okay. So in our pot, we are going to go in with our crumbs that we made there from our nuts and our oat cakes. And then I'm also, we don't want an all really soft texture, so I'm gonna go in with a few different textures. So we have these ones. I am gonna go in with some of our apricots as well. So you remember our lovely organic apricots there, a handful of them. Now I love the dried apricots as my kids do as well. So we go in with those. We're gonna go in with um, about 40 grams of our flaked almonds. So again, at home, is feel free to measure everything. I just tend to sort of have a bit of a handful here, handful there. So it is 40 grams of mixed nuts. It's 40 grams of our apricots and it is 40 grams of our flaked almonds, okay? So just in case if anybody is a bit likes to sort of go exactly according to a recipe, that's that one. So I'm just gonna show you how this is now. And then I'm also, going to go in there with just a couple of, actually, no, I'll the pecans instead. 
a couple of chopped pecans. So these are your little pecans here, these lovely little fellas, really, really tasty. So again, we're just gonna chop these nice and roughly. And it just adds a little bit of texture to them as well. And we'll pop them in there and give that a good mix around. So I'm just going to show you this now, what this is starting to look like. So you can see there, we've kind of got all the nuts and everything in there. So we're going to go in and start adding a little bit of our chocolate. Okay. And we're just going to pour a little bit in. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous. And then we're just going to give that a little mix around, okay? I'm actually going to use a spoon for this because I have, in fact, melted my spatula. Not too much. Now, give that a good mix around. And then we're going to go in with another bit of our chocolate. So it's like pure silk, this. And the smell of it, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So we're just going to mix that around. So think back what it's like is when you used to make Rice Krispie buns with the children, only though this is a lot more grown up and a lot more decadent as well. So we've got ourselves there. You can see there, it's quite a dark sort of um, thick mix. So again, I'm just going to go in with a few more flaked almonds and a few more of our bright apricots. And that is just gorgeous. So this is one of these where, you know what, if you are trying to cut back on the sugar and the sweet stuff, one of these goes a long way. So now, what I'm going to do with this one is I'm just going to spoon it, pop them out of the way. I'm going to spoon it into, I have some cases over here, so I'm just going to grab these. And these are just, just your normal little bun cases, these ones. And we're just going to, get yourself some clean spoons, we're just going to spoon in into a few little cases. Okay, so a little goes a long way here, lads, so don't don't go too mad on filling them up. They're not like bun cases. And just a little bit into each one. Because you're using the dark chocolate as well, it's very, very rich as well. So, But it is a great way of kind of, um, if you are looking to sort of come away from milk chocolate, it is a great way of introducing yourself to it because you're getting the sweetness almost from the apricots as well. And just a few more into the other ones here. You'll probably get about um, maybe about 10 out of it, depending on how big you make them. Now, I know if I make these very big, I will eat them big. So I'm going to make them more, so a little bit smaller. So I will think twice before I have a second one. And the last bit out of your pot. Oh, it smells absolutely gorgeous. Sometimes as well, what I put into this is I'll grate the zest of an orange as well. So you'll always end up with like a chocolate orange cluster and that is divine. Fine, now, okay. So let me just show you these ones. So you can see here, I showed them there to you. And then what I'm gonna do is you can, if you like, is pop a few little flaked almonds onto the top. And I'll do that on some of them, and I'll leave them off the other ones, okay? So again, it just adds another little bit of the nuts as well in there, which I love. Beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop them into the freezer for a second. So give me one second, and I just want them to chill down quickly. I'm just going to pop them into the shelf on the freezer. And I'm going to give them a couple of minutes. Now, I'm back here in focus. So, I'm just going to check is what we've left now on our flapjacks. And we've got about three minutes left. So, I'm going to recap over everything. And then at the end, I'm going to take the stuff out and I'm going to show it to you what it looks like. 
So the first thing we had again was our lovely healthy fat tracks, followed by our chocolate nut clusters. So I, I did recap over the flapjacks, but what you can do with them is you can add in lots of different varieties in there as well. If you want, you can add in your chopped nuts. You can add in uh, little chocolate chunks as well. You can buy those little chocolate chunks. You can chop up some dark chocolate and just sort of mix it through when the mix is not warm because otherwise the chocolate will melt. So you can mix that through. You can at the end, what I'm going to do is I have a little bit of dark chocolate left and I'm going to drizzle it over the top of the flapjacks and let that dry, okay? And they are absolutely divine. So again, as I flavor them with some cinnamon in there, but by all means, is you don't have to put the cinnamon in, you don't have to put the seeds in, it's whatever, you can have them completely plain, okay? So they are a great little snack as well for the children. My kids use them as well, they take them to school with them, wrap them up in a bit of cling film or whatever, Brilliant, brilliant snack because the oats again, slow releasing of energy as well. They'll keep you fuller for longer as well. The seeds in there as well, and the um, flax seeds and all are all protein. So you have that protein and the oats, and that will keep you full for hours. And then on our chocolate nut clusters, we have 100 grams of our delicious dark chocolate, which is absolutely looking fab. We had uh, 40 grams of your own choice of nuts, but again, uncooked nuts, so it's the raw nuts. We had 40 grams of dried fruit, so you can either do a mix if you want to do 20 grams of cranberries, 20 grams of apricots. I didn't have any unsweetened cranberries, so I went 40 grams of apricots instead. Uh, four oat cakes. Um, you can add a little bit of maple syrup if you want. I don't tend to, but it's up to yourself if you want. I do have it in the recipe there if you want to, if you want to include it. Some flaked almonds in there, about 40 grams, and then your 100 grams of dark chocolate. And then you're just blitzing your, um, the nuts apart from the almonds. So the oat cakes and the nuts, you're going to blitz them in your little neutral bullet until they're breadcrumbs, basically. Then you're going to mix into that your um, dry fruit, your apricot, your flaked almonds as well. Get that well mixed in a bowl and then start to pour in your chocolate. You'll find maybe you might need as much chocolate as you think you have, but that's okay. You can use it for something else. And as I say, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drizzle it over the top of my um, flapjacks as well. So again, the chocolate nut cluster is a real low GL food as well. So it's going to really, really fill you up with the nuts as well. But it's also as well, feels a bit decadent, it feels a bit sweet as well. So you feel like you're actually getting, you know, some form of treat as well with your copper as well. So let me just check this. These are going to come out now. And I'm going to actually drizzle the chocolate on them when they're hot as well. So ideally we would let them cool. But again, today, because obviously for time, we're going to drizzle it over and then I'm going to let them cool. So again, is um, let me just go now and check. The, um, the nut clusters only need a couple of minutes in the freezer, okay? Or in the fridge, whichever, okay? And then they will sit somewhere cool and they'll probably last about four to five days, but I would be very surprised if they last that long. So let me just go and get them from the freezer and pop them back out. Now, everything's starting to come out at the same time, which is brilliant. So I'm just going to take out the blackjacks. And beautiful smell of peanut butter and bananas and all in them. Oh my gosh, they're gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to show you those now in one second. Switch off that. And what I'm going to do is, if I just show you these without burning myself. this a little bit easier. As you can see there, the gorgeous flapjacks. Now, again, they're only going to be a slightly golden brown as well, because you don't want them to, the longer you cook them, the more that they will dry out, at which point you're going to end up with a very dry and a very dense flapjack, and we don't want that. Now, let's not waste not one nut with our lovely chocolate here. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to take what's left, and it really is like silk. And I am just going to drizzle it over the top. And again, that's the artistic side coming out of me. But they are such, I mean, they really are an exceptionally 
healthy flap jack as flap jacks go. And then you buy in the shop will tend to be absolutely packed full of very nasty stuff in a lot of cases, but an awful lot of sugar, an awful lot of preservatives, an awful lot of oils and stuff that you really, really don't want in your diet. So again, other than that is this lovely chocolate would have been wasted. And I'm just going to show you then what that looks like. So you can see there you have your gorgeous, real decadent blackjacks. And then just to show you these guys here, again, these would have had a lot longer in the freezer or in the fridge. But again, as I would just let these set up and then I'll just show you what these are going to come out like then. So you have, you can see there is they just have these beautiful little, you can see there now, lovely, lovely little sort of dark chocolate nut clusters in there as well. And once they then sort of um, dry a lot more, is there's going to be a lot more crunch to them. And then again, is once they set down nice and hard, is they'll be absolutely lovely. And as I say, is a little goes a long way in those ones. So guys, that is my lovely healthy flapjacks today, my dark chocolate nut clusters. And if anyone is interested in cooking more with me, is please go to my Facebook page, Good Food Nutrition. Lots of recipes, lots of tips there. And also the nut clusters recipe you will find at www.goodfoodnutrition.co.uk. And if you go to recipes and it's under my 10 guilt-free chocolate treats, okay? Lots and lots of uh, recipes there as well. So hopefully you've enjoyed that today. I certainly have. And I will see you all again on Friday at 3 p.m. for a little bit of weekend cooking. So enjoy your treats. Have a lovely cup in the garden. And I will see you all Friday. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.